on Finnegan's Wake, I think, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, you're using kind of Finnegan's Wake to give one perspective on what madness is, of what's going on in the mind. How much of that is uh, that we're simply unable to communicate with the person on the other side yeah. of of their mind? Like there's almost like a a little person inside the brain and they have some circuitry that's used to communicate emotion, communicate ideas to the outside world. And there's something about that circuitry that makes it difficult to communicate with the little person on the other side. So if you look at what shows up in schizophrenia, with many cases, the, the what we call thought disorders, what we call uh, the, the individual speech symptoms of, of schizophrenia, Finnegan's Wake is, is loaded with them. And it's, it's just full of them. We, we, we talk about uh, clang associations in schizophrenia where the word that is said is echoes in some way the previous word. And it's, we call that a clang association because there's no other reason than the similarity of the sound, like a, like a clang of a, of, a, of a garage door being hit. And it has a, uh, and sometimes it's not even a word, and we call that a neologism, uh, a new word being created. And of course, Finnegan's Wake is, is full of that. And then uh, we, we also, in schizophrenia, where there's what we call loose associations or tangential thought processes, of course, full of that where things just go off in directions that are not uh, linear or logical. And you can't read Finnegan's Wake, I think, without, um, certainly as a psychiatrist, you can't read it without thinking about schizophrenia. And then when we look at the families of people with schizophrenia, and, and Joyce was no exception, there very often are people within the family who are on the spectrum. Some have it, some are able to see it from a distance, from a safe distance. There's an association between schizophrenia and what we call schizotypal personality disorder, where people are not quite in this severe state of schizophrenia, but have some magical thinking, have some unusual uh, thought patterns. Very often those are family members of people with schizophrenia. So this points to this, again, to this idea that, that there is a, a range, even along this very severe very genetic biological illness that human beings dwell on different spots along that spectrum. I should mention that we have my friend Sergey pulling up stuff, young Sergey or old Sergey, I don't know what to call you, but uh, there's drafts of Finnegan's Wake. Yeah, I actually saw pictures of this from, um, I think it was on Instagram or something. These are early drafts of Finnegan's Wake. And it's so beautiful to see for people who are just listening, there's just random paragraphs and writing all over the page with stuff crossed out. And it's great to see that Joyce himself was thinking in this kind of way as um, as you're putting it together. How much do you think he was thinking about schizophrenia, uh, the schizophrenic mind? I think a lot. I think, you know, it's it's known that his, his daughter suffered from, from schizophrenia. And uh, the, this is what, what's depicted here on the page is something that I'm sure he either felt himself in some some level was able to access this nonlinearity of of processing, or had seen enough in family uh, that he he knew what it was and and was able to to reflect it down in black and white on the paper. So it was what he was able to do was was quite authentic in that sense. Of course, I don't want to pigeonhole him. He was doing much more than that. It was much more than than talking about altered human thought processes and thought disorders, but that was an aspect that he was so good at representing that it had to be intentional to some extent. 